What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So in this one, what we're gonna be going through today is conversion rate optimization. So this is specifically for people who are already running websites and you're already publishing content. You've gone past that kind of beginner phase and you're kind of getting into that mediocre part of SEO now. What this involves is purely getting more out of your existing traffic. So we're trying to benefit and gain more from your existing efforts in your SEO. What we're gonna go through in this video is absolutely everything whether it be from increasing monetization, increasing user metrics or behavior on your pages, creative content writing, imagery, formatting, absolutely everything. So if you're really excited to watch this video, then make sure to smash that like button first of all before we get into it and subscribe at any point if you do feel that this is the kind of content you want to regularly see. Let's get onto the computer. Prepare to have your mind blown if you haven't done conversion rate optimization before. Now just before we get into this, I'm going to let you know that a lot of this just revolves purely around split testing. So if we actually take a look at this, um, we're going to go through absolutely everything. I've got a few bullets here and I'm going to elaborate on each of these points because these are the things that you need to be doing. So if we're talking about in regards to your content, the first thing that we need to do is when a reader lands on your page, when you have a piece of content, the first thing you need to do is confirm that the reader's in the right place. This is the number one goal that you have. Okay. And the reason why is because when someone lands on your page you've only got like a split second to capture them yeah otherwise they're gone onto another page or searching again or whatever it bouncing off your page so how do you do that well we do that through uh, potential three ways okay you don't have to use all of them you can use them all or you can use just one or whatever yeah well really and truly you can use them all or you could use just two of them so if we actually take a look at this we can see that featured image is one of them so when someone lands on a page and let's actually give you an example here so if we take a look at this article here it's very well ranking and whatever else right now we've got a few things happening okay so we've got the uh, h1 title which we've listed out here so we've got the h1 title we've got the first line of text as the person comes down they've got that first line of text like to to not notify them of, of what this is about and where they aim to gain from reading it and then we've got the featured image so we're looking for the best vacuum for pet hair so you can see that the image clearly conveys that so if someone lands on this page right here above the fold which is above the fold is basically anything above this line down here where the mouse is and if we actually look at this on mobile we'll be able to see how that looks as well see so you can see um, these things are happening even above the fold so you can vary it because they're not using actually first line of text they're more focused on the actual title and and the featured image now we're going to go on to seo you want to do your correct word count now the reason why correct word count is important for conversions is purely because you don't want something that's long-winded for something that only requires a short conversation or you don't want something that's a short conversation when it requires a very long-winded answer like a long elaborated answer okay you head over to a site called key search you can drum in any um, keyword into here so that best true toys for pit bulls I was looking at and what this does it takes into the account the top 10 ranking sites so you can see 4,000 3,000 these are all the word counts you divide it by the amount of um, pages it's taken into account which is 10 in this example and then it will give you an average okay so 2700 is like the average of the top 10 so that's what you want to be doing okay we're gonna understand search intent um, by different keywords so we have best buy keywords if someone's looking for a best buy keyword you don't want to explain to them what the product is like for example if someone's looking for the best vacuums for their dog you don't need to explain like what a vacuum is for a dog because they already know that they've already done all that research they're in a different part of the buying cycle they're now looking for the actual the actual product yeah and they know that they want that product it's not like they don't know for example if you were talking in a different kind of context you might be uh, explaining why the importance of having that product is good you know so you're explaining the benefits of a product like that and all of that they already know that they already know that they want a vacuum and they already know that they want a vacuum for their dog and they already know the kind of vacuum that they want they just want to see a comparison of the best ones so maybe that's based on price range or, or model or functionality or something along those lines so if we actually take a look at review keywords as well that's usually when someone's at the end of the buying cycle so they know the exact product that they're looking for 
for. So they've already gone through the best ones. They know they've singled out one that they're going for. All it is is that they need a genuine person to confirm that they're making the right decision. That That's all it is, honestly. You can do everything around the world for a review keyword, but all someone's ever looking for is another person that they can relate to. They don't want like some expert or anything like that. They want a relatable character that confirms they're making the right decision. That's it, point blank period. We don't need to explain that further. Now, if we take a look at how to keywords, we want actionable information. So there needs to be some kind of transition when someone's actually um, going into something about a how to, like how to write SEO content when if we were targeting a keyword like that even on a YouTube video I use the same kind of style you need to learn how to do that by the time you've left like you need to not know it when you come in and know leave when you leave you know so there needs to be a transition and that's the way you have to think of it now depending on different types of search intent uh, keywords will depend on how how likely someone is to make a purchase and also will depend on the kind of traffic that you can expect so when someone's typing something very vague is less buyer intent because they're at the beginning of that cycle um, and then as they get into more longer tail specific kind of searches and they're more higher likely to make a purchase or convert I should say not make a purchase because conversion could be opting in to your email list or anything like that so tomato plant is like the same topic tomato plant but it's very vague so it has a lot of search because it's a very broad term highest competition is going to be up here the least amount of buyers are going to be here so the only thing you might want to do here is just like put some piece of content in front of people about tomato plants and different things about them. So like a complete overhaul of, of tomatoes and plants and whatever else. Then when to plant tomato plants. So this is a little bit more specific. You can see that the search volumes dropped on average here and then they're getting a bit more specific. So they're specifically looking about planting tomatoes. So it's not just tomato plants. They're, they're actually looking to plant them. Okay, now we've got tomato plants for sale. So this is a bit more specific again because they're not just looking for tomato plants. They're actually looking to buy tomato plants and um, so what you'd put in front of them here is this is almost like them asking what is the best tomato plants yeah like or to where can I buy tomato plants you know that's what that also means and sometimes you need to understand those kind of different contexts when you're writing a piece of content to understand the intent behind the search and if you are unsure of user intent or search intent sorry what we can do is we can uh, drum this into Google if we take a look at this keyword what's going to help us is as I said without even reading this or ever searching where can I buy tomato plants I'm, I'm sure I said something along those lines yeah and then if you look down here it also gives you a bit more ideas but if you even open a few different you know pieces of content here they, they usually would um, give you that elaborate answer of exactly what the user is trying to get out of this so what is the best time to plant tomatoes so yeah where can I buy tomato plants is exactly what they're asking then why are my tomato plants turning yellow this is very super specific so they're not just talking about tomato plants they're specifically talking about their plants turning yellow so they want a direct answer on this so it's a very specific search and this is where you're going to have the highest amount of conversions happening because they're very they're looking for a specific thing so if you can tell them why their tomato plants are turning yellow and provide them a solution you're probably going to convert them either it be into a, a sale or or into an email list or some kind of information gathering data from them and then if we actually look at this as well just generally when you're looking at a long question like this that's question based we're looking about 1500 words for that kind of things the next thing is going to be no walls of text so stick to a maximum of three lines per paragraph and that's very simple to understand you just don't want any walls of text when you go on to read an article so many of you may have seen a passive income geek YouTube is I think he's got a very good formatting for his website you see how he does like two to three lines yeah that's what he keeps to like a three line maximum most two but if it's three then he doesn't go over three lines um, I've been using this and I think it's very good because when you actually uh, now convert this to mobile and everything should be optimized for mobile first that you do because Google is optimizing for that as well is you can see how nice it looks on mobile as well so if we were to take a look at Pet Life's website and we put that onto mobile we're probably going to see quite a big wall of text see so we can see how big that is taking up the screen so it's still good because this site ranks but I think it would perform maybe better if they were to split test and break that text up a little bit. Okay, so make sure to mark up each of your sections with H2s, H3s and H4s. So this is purely for skim readers. 
So if you actually go up to this article and we were to zoom out, you should be able to clearly see the different sections that you can quickly navigate to, okay? And you can also use a table of contents to help readers do this. But if we come down, you can see that this one is purely like products. And then we've got a little bit more about why you should buy it and so on and so forth. Important features to consider. We've got all of those different subheadings of that as well, and which will be H3s. And then the H2 would be frequently asked questions. And then H3s here and h2 for that so anytime you have a h2 if you've got anything that's a subsection of that will go under h3 and any subsections of your h3 will be a h4 but if you start a new topic again it's going to be back to a h2 the only thing that should be a h1 on your whole page is your title which you don't have to optimize your theme does that for you use tons of tables and lists and that's quite important if you're conveying any types of information it's very good to use tables and lists and a very good example of this is income schools camper report website so this is a good example of what they do you know this is about what size generator you need and then they've got different sizes for different things and so on and so forth so they've got lots of information here in tables and this is just Gutenberg that they're using for that and it looks very nice and neat so you don't need to go and actually install any third-party plugins just use Gutenberg it's probably gonna give you the fastest page loading time okay so we move on to creative writing now now this is very simple what you want to do is have a brilliant introduction so tell the reader what the article is about and what they aim to gain from reading the article that's all you need to do so income score probably going to be the best example of this so if we go to electricity they're dropping like a, a you know like a relatable knowledge bomb here like they're just telling you they're showing you that they're an authority on this topic you know they know what they're talking about and then you know they, they go on to tell you like what you're going to learn yeah so what exactly is a good size you know and that and that's what you wanted to know so they and then they give you the straight answer here they've bolded that you can see and then they go on to elaborate on the rest of that answer so that's exactly the kind of process you want to follow especially for a question based keyword if you've got a best buy article then you want to tell them that you're going to be comparing products and you give them the results throughout the article or whatever it may be niche relevant content okay so context so what you need to focus on here is is it a fun topic or is it a technical kind of topic i find that conversational tone works for most niches okay so like people like fun and friendly on the internet you don't come onto the internet unless you're learning about like investment banking or something like that you usually want a fun and friendly uh, context and a great example of that is a website that i used to uh, go and learn trading on called babypips.com they basically take the most complex information and and break it down into a very easy to understand fun and friendly tone so look words like instead of r oh, not you want to use like aren't you know or cannot can't very internet conversational tone like so aren't and can't and shortening you know using all of those apostrophes and all of that kind of thing to break up your words into a nice conversational tone first or third person so if your website's like a big brand authority site then you might write in third person i personally find that first person works best on all types of content because when someone's on a, an article they want to feel like they can trust your article and people only trust people not not like a company yeah so like they trust the people or the brand behind the company but they always want to feel like that one-on-one -on -one engagement so i find that first person you can split test this but i probably would recommend just doing first person at all times next thing is bucket brigades all that is is when you're writing a piece of content and then you need someone on to read on to the next part of of the content so if we were in an article like this for example um, you can break up pieces of content as well with expert quotes and things like that but if we were coming down here we might say at the end of this um, but we'll touch more on this later you know so this is called a bucket brigade because it, it leads a person from onto this part on onto the next part like even if you started you'll find people using them introductions like although it's nice to know blah 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 this post will aim at giving you the ins and outs see so they're telling them again what i said in the introduction um what they aim to gain yeah so tells the reader what they will gain and what why they should listen so you can see they're telling them here you know what this post will aid you in giving you the ins and outs and how generators work that is the number one thing that this person wants to know so they're telling them we're going to tell you that we're going to teach you that okay it will also help you to blah 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 so this is another thing that person might want to know after they've done their research how generators work with acu you know so you might say at the end of this like stick around um for blah 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 you know so it's just a bucket brigade leading them on so you want to use like several of them to lead the person from this section onto the next and this one onto the next to keep them reading down the page 
okay and it's not absolutely paramount but you want to include them like incorporate them in your general writing style you want to use creative starters and, and sentences so not the words like that and this constantly like i absolutely hate that like all the time when someone keeps going this is the big rv this is that this is the product from here it's just very boring there's a lack of effort that they've put into that and they need to think about creatively starting a sentence so using other wording other than the and this and whatever else all the common words is usually good practice so you can see here they've got the at the start of some sentences but maybe like three or four throughout a whole 15 2000 word article or 1500 words whereas um you know you'll find some people using it again and again and you don't want either it to be repetitive if you are using other words and you just want like a genuine conversation like you don't speak like that so you wouldn't use it on the internet okay but people tend to overdo it on on the internet when they're writing content we also want a research intensive tone so we don't want to sound like we're a novice to the field because someone's coming here to get information from us and learn some things so if we go through any of this um it wants to be research intensive and that's the Things like including data, using references, using specific pricing or ranges, using tables and really showcasing that you are in this space and this is something you don't just understand and know but you're also passionate about. So we can see here you know for a generator AC unit you're using all of the language within the, the, the niche as well. For dogs like you might use you know like goldens for like golden retrievers or collars and different things, kibble for food, all these different words are things that show that you are actually in this niche and you understand it okay so that's something that a dog owner someone who doesn't own a dog wouldn't know and then as you can see here um, they're talking about what's and all things like that you know because they genuinely um, know that these people understand wattage and different things because they're in that niche like I mean BTUAC like uh, you know I, I think this is like actual current direct there's actual alternative current that's what that will stand for but someone who's not in that space probably doesn't know that you know so yeah AC alternative current you know these are the things that people are going to be familiar with genuinely just if they're in this space okay so okay so featured images we've already talked about that you want to use images throughout your article you want topic relevant images throughout the content so as you can see here all of the images are related uh, to the actual niche so calculating your specific needs and then it's got that calculating so it's related to the section that they're talking about so throughout these subsections you want to use images that are related to the next following section you're going to use it talk about there like this one will be related to generators and ac or whatever so you can see it's exactly that and so on and so forth and then also include lots of videos you want to use alt text uh, for people who are blind readers and also to rank in google images okay so all alt text is is it also makes up some of your uh, keyword density within an article so don't go and shove your keyword in there 10 times and whatever else but what it also helps with is people who are visually impaired when they come in it will read what the image is about so when you do this you just want to describe the image and this can also help you to rank in google images which can bring more traffic to the particular article so now we move on to uh, call to actions okay so you don't want to use no more than like five buttons on a given page but you can split test this um, i use about three call to action buttons on average on a given uh, review but that's totally up to you what you want to do as well is just check what's happening in the niche like if we were to go into baby sleep if we actually go and look um, you can see what the niche what's doing well there so these are i mean you could do better than this look at the big chunk of wall text it's not attractive at all but we can see how many call to actions they're using their word count on average all of that so they got one here and then they got like one up there and you want to also see um, whether it's better to use a contextual link um, like this or a button okay so they're using this as well so they got a few things and then if we take a look at this one we can see they're breaking it up with a lot of images and then they've got like a call to action there so you just want to see and the split test in, in the niche and we've got contrasting color uh, to uh, website theme so you don't want to be using the same colors um, for your call to action as what your theme is if your theme is like green you don't want to use a green button it needs to be like red or something opposite okay and you can actually google um, specific colors that are opposite to certain colors to have something that stands out and pops on the page direct instructions on CTAs so when you're giving um, a call to action you want to tell someone click here to go and 
and buy it or click here to go check it out or whatever it needs to be very clear in communication not like learn more or something like that because they already learned what they need to on your page and they're going over to, 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 to now make a buying decision contextual links versus buttons again like I said you can split test that then if we go into specific product reviews we can see the first thing you want to do for this kind of thing is you may you want to make each product the best at something so what purpose or problem does it specifically solve so you see this one it's like best for pet hair overall this is the best overall product like best on that's based on price range blah 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 all these different metrics that they've taken into account whereas then you've got like this one's the best for money so the best to save money best budget buy okay this one's best canister this one's best upright so they've made it and this is a very good example because this is the best at this yeah so this is how you can have multiple products but someone might pick different things because they might want to save money so they'll come straight to this section and it's clearly highlighted and broken up with a h2 heading so if they were scanning through as you can see they could clearly see oh boom that's one and then they'll start to read on and they'll click that and potentially go and buy that product based on that review so that's what you want to do there you also want to um, kind of identify the uniqueness of this product against any other product on the market so what's different about this you know how does it differ from everything else just basic um, writing skills and then explain the benefits and not the features so you don't want to talk too much about specific like numbers and measurements of this product and how much it hoovers up you want to kind of uh, explain what change this brings to someone's life how does it improve their life or, or their dog's life or whatever else in this example okay so more focus on the benefits it brings to the person opposed to the actual features and specs keep your um, reviews about 200 to 250 words of course you can split test this and see what performs better and drop an interesting fact that they didn't know um you know of why they cannot live with, with, with why they can't live without this product or, or something like that you know so something to tell them like that's interesting about this product you know so a specific like fact or something like that i find that works very good in in helping you to convert so if we move down we've got a click to rate optimization so all that is is basically when we're looking at these page results here so one of the first things you want to do is front load your keywords so you can see here right here it's very clear here front loaded there front loaded there baby sleep miracle Re view so it's just basic seo practice you don't have to do that but this is just very good practice you want to leave on cliffhangers in this second section use specific like use numbers if you can include that numbers work very well in these sections to improve your click-through rate you also want to incorporate your keyword into the description but i generally just leave them blank at this stage because google can optimize different uh, meta descriptions for different uh, keywords that you show up for so if you leave it blank it will just pluck it out of your article and use secondary keywords inside of here um, to understand the search intent so for example um, you can see that this person that the, you know the related searches are sounds tips blah 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 okay so in a review so what's someone looking for like you know so secondary what's the secondary thing like the intent behind it they're looking for is it is it good is it does it stand up to what it's about like you know is this product even legit that's the kind of thing you want to use like you know baby sleep miracle review is this really legit or is it good you know or this is my experience all that kind of thing okay so you just need to think look does it really work that that's a perfect example and quite commonly used um, for product reviews on Clickbank so for monetization I'm just going to talk you through that here and um, a few ways that you can improve your monetization um, for conversion rate optimization is by selling an ebook that's a good way you know you could easily sell an ebook you can go into Fiverr find someone they'll do it for about $200 or you can actually go to iWriter.com they had a section before for ebook books but yeah you know maybe about I don't know how many words you're going to put in it but you might be looking a couple hundred dollars just to get that done they, they do do ebooks I'm not sure where they are one of the other things is you could use an email follow-up okay so an email follow-up sequence can increase your conversions on your website so your existing traffic you could increase your conversions on a particular product that you're trying to promote or make more revenue out of other products you know so you could include other products you can also replace products with better ones so if you've got a high performance post um, but you're not getting that much conversions on a particular product then go into your reviews like for example like this and you could swap this product out for a better one or something that's more relevant or up to date or if you've got an article um, that you're ranking for and you're not signed up to the affiliate program because they for any particular reason didn't allow you to sign up or they kicked you out of the program you could then uh, cross sell and just basically promote uh, an alternative product pick out a problem with that product that you don't like and recommend an alternative so you convert all that traffic into a competitive to 
product. And what's really good about that kind of technique is because you can find other competitors' products that you might potentially not be able to get into the program for or you don't think is a good product, but it might have low competition and high search volume. So if you can find that, it's a very good avenue to go down on a few posts um, to recommend an alternative. And then the last one is negotiate higher pay payouts with your affiliate vendors. So if you're on Amazon, you can't do this, of course, but if you are promoting uh, ClickBank products, that's a very good way of doing it, or individual vendors you're working with, which you can do even if you are promoting Amazon type products, you can reach out to these vendors um, by finding them on Amazon. If we actually go up here, like you'll find the, the company and you can reach out to them and, and promote their products. Yeah, so I mean, you might be able to go over to that Shark Rota and actually actually find you know their website and see if they have an affiliate program there because they, they're selling it on Amazon they probably do an affiliate program as well and yeah reach out to them but um, that's genuinely it um, guys so I mean these are complete tips I'm gonna leave this in a link below this video but there's a ton of tips here to increase your conversion rates okay and um, if you are new to this channel and you don't know about my ebook I would highly recommend you go and check it out because there's a crap ton of information inside of there that goes into all of this and then some um, in a lot more detail and um, easier format maybe to understand as well so you have it there you can refer back to it all right if you did like this video make sure to smash the thumbs up and as with always i'll see you in the next one peace